G.I. Joe fans, Joe Motion Videos 82 here. It is time for another G.I. Joe toy review and welcome to Cobra Convergence 4. It is huge this year and I have been granted the privilege, nay, the pleasure of hosting the second segment of Cobra Convergence for this month and man, I was just thrilled to death when Hootie Coco asked me to join them this year, and wow, I mean, this is such an honor. Thank you very much, Hootie Coco, for thinking of me. I really greatly appreciate it. Just for this occasion, I pulled out my Alley Viper costume, and I am sweltering in it. But I will suffer through for you guys, and hey, come on, look at this, it's cool. I'd wear this all year long if I could. But <laughs> all that said aside, I have a wonderful, oh man, the 1985 Hydrofoil. I have been dying to review this one. I Ever since I got it, I've been wanting to review it. And I was saving it for just such an occasion. So when CC4 came around as this is the perfect time for it. Let's do it. And it's also my third year anniversary as a reviewer. Yes, I've been doing this for three years. Can you believe that? It's it's nuts. It has gone by so fast. Oh, man. And you guys have been fantastic. I really appreciate it, especially those who just recently subscribed. Thank you for that. So let's go ahead and get into this review. The Hydrofoil came out in 85, and 85 brought us, I think that was the year of grandiose for G.I. Joe. We got the biggest play set ever in toy history. It was the USS Flag that only came with one action figure. Why? It should have at least come with two or three for that cost, you know? But it came with one action figure. Then we got the Tactical Battle Platform, another really big play set. And then we had the Hydrofoil, another really big vehicle. I mean, 85 brought us a lot. They, they brought us the ball-jointed necks so the heads moved up and down. I mean, 85 was a huge year for G.I. Joe. And seen by a lot of people as the golden year of G.I. Joe, and I'm really starting to understand that. Because that's when they really took off. But 86 is still my favorite year. So, as for mentioned, the Hydrofoil was released in 85. It was on the shelves until 87 when it was discontinued. It came out as a part of the 4 series. It came with the driver Lamprey who the driver uh, was actually available in 1989 through Hasbro Direct as a part of the Special Missions Driver Pack uh, that came with Ace, Thunder, uh, Keel Hall, Strato Viper, and Motor Viper. So you could have gotten all those drivers in that mail away offer. Uh, th there were two versions of the Hydrofoil that had come out. The first version held together with snaps, and the second one had has posts on it. Mine has the posts. I wish I had the one with the snaps to show you, and I have a story about that here in a second. But it originally retailed for $13.99, and it looking at it, I. You know, thirteen ninety nine was a a big chunk of change for that time period, but it is such a an awesome vehicle. It is well made. So, you know, thirteen ninety nine, it's that's pretty good. I think they just barely made a profit off of these, honestly, at that price. I mean, it was a notoriously hard vehicle to put together. It's very complex. So my first exposure with this was my friend John had this. And um, 
he had the the first run that had the snaps and um, that notoriously fell apart if you looked at it sideways if you have that version you know that the the bow of the ship it will buckle when you try to hold it together the front part snaps down really well but it'll start to bow uh, towards the bow and it I remember accidentally knocking it off of uh, the uh, end table that John had it setting on and it just flew apart I felt terrible he was mad uh, naturally it um, sorry <laughs> it you know, it took him forever to put it together. He was really upset, so he and I, after me profusely apologizing and getting a pummeling, just kidding, he didn't hit me, um, we, we put it back together, and that's how I know how difficult it was to put together. Those, those snaps are just the bane of collector's existence. So they, I'm sure after a flood of complaints from parents, Hasbro retooled and created the one with the clips, which I have, but looking at it, I could still see where it's lifting up just a little bit from it being put together all these years. So without any further jawing and further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this fine vehicle. Apologize for the frame being small. I had to use the wider angle just to cover this vehicle. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off with his dri the driver, the Lamprey. Uh, this is a very nice example. Uh, nice tight joints on it. Uh, just to show you, this is a modern version of the Lamprey. So I have him setting up in the, the gun tour. He's the captain of the ship. Pretty cool that guy is. So... The Lamprey came with one accessory. He came with this machine gun. It looks like a grease gun from World War II. Uh, has this fixed shoulder strap on it. Uh, if you could see that or not, but the barrel has cooling slots on it. Magazine that fit from the side. And uh, it fits fairly well in his hand and I'm making a fool out of myself his thumbs are too tight I'm not going to force it but um, I had it in earlier but the plastic is is soft but a uh, very nice gun uh, oftentimes you will find the shoulder strap being cut off so um, something to look out for now the Lamprey is one of the cooler vehicle drivers definitely not Cobra looking in a way uh, he is wearing this silver uh, jumpsuit splashes of blue on it his gloves and vest uh, he has a pistol holster with no pistol in it slung around his waist with a, a blue belt and a silver belt buckle or gold belt buckle which I'm very happy that the, that it has not worn off blue gloves he has this really cool helmet this is one of the best helmets out there if you you ask me uh, it has a visor on it which I don't really see the purpose of it but it looks gnarly anyway it has air slots through the sides and the front he has a black looks like he's wearing a black balaclava underneath and uh, black boots stiletto with a gold knife in it very very nice example and up here on his arm he has the lamprey insignia great looking figure but with the modern version I'm not going to go completely into him 
but they they added the Cobra sigil on there pretty cool now I have an uncut file card now this is what I meant from a few reviews back the uncut file card that comes with a vehicle driver this white part on here is cut off sometimes but it reads hydrofoil pilot codename Lamprey file name is unknown very typical for Cobra primary military specialty hydrofoil pilot secondary specialty Cobra frogman uh, eel you have to be an eel before you can be a hydrofoil pilot makes sense makes a lot of sense you need that uh, underwater training if you're going to be out on the water birthplace various countries grade 04 or 03 or equivalent so he's a captain uh, bottom paragraph reads lampreys are the elite of the cobra sea arm to qualify for lampreys training a candidate must be a cobra trooper in top physical condition who has completed his eel training eels are frogmen underwater demolition specialist for the Cobra Legion he has been and has been operational as an eel for more than a year the training is highly selective and more than 50 percent of the applicants wash out before completing the course okay so these guys are pretty tough and you see the back is plain so now looking at this very very nice vehicle oh I have another lamp right this is mine from my childhood you can see they have a tendency to yellow and the gold isn't as rubbed off and he has a broken hand unfortunate BB gun incident so let's switch the camera up here give you the better screenshot there is a lot to look at with this vehicle starting with the side guns here I did my best to dust it off I'm gonna have to take an air can to it but uh, these huge cannons here on the side uh, they slot in with these little pegs be careful with with these pegs right here as they break off down at the bottom is the hydrofoil very nice looking hydrofoil insignia along the side here comes with two matching torpedoes which are notorious to fall off but I as you can see there's a little sheen on the top here I put some sealer on the torpedo so uh, it'll hold into the slot but you see on one side it has looks like an eel or a cobra they put the sticker on the wrong side so it's supposed to actually the sticker is supposed to be showing forward but a kid put it together and the torpedo fits right into these slots here see let's take the slotted part here we go pop it up in there and lock it forward it has the RO7 sticker on it. it has these two missiles that peg into these whoops sorry to these little holes right here pretty cool little missiles um, those aren't missing very often has two crew hatches figure fits right down in there you see I have a packing peanut in there that's my favorite packing peanut that's why I stuck it in there oh. has a pilot seat and these do swivel you get you oh well I'm sorry for the shoddy camera work <laughs> They do swivel side to side as a working steering wheel. These windows are notoriously missing, so that's something to look out for. Has a gun on the inside, 
which the driver or the pilot or passenger I should say cannot reach but it does swivel and here on the front is a little plunger when you push it down the missile compartment opens as four missiles which are a pain in the butt to take out but uh, you can see there are four identical missiles it has these weird little slots at the bottom and they slot right into these little holes but we also use used to use this spare, spare compartment down here to store additional joes that they were taken captive and that is a problem getting that hatch closed so here you can see are the tabs which were mentioned before they were little buttons you just snapped it on prior but uh, the hull here would just bow okay at the top here oh I do apologize this is a mess uh, it has the a turret which does rotate completely around I thought I did a better job dusting that. And the gun lifts up and down. Very nice looking gun. Oh, here is a spotlight, which, sorry, does work very well. Uh, this is notoriously missing the lens, so watch out for that. I did not find a lens on the aftermarket, but the last time I checked, they were pretty expensive. Here on the back, it's an engine cover and this the exhaust does not like to stay in on mine but you see it's a very nicely detailed engine engine cover has some great detail on it too open slot at the front which goes around the dual exhaust on the back has these four guns these notoriously break off as well, right there at the peg, and they slot down in these little holes. So be careful of that. This one broke off. I had to glue it down. But right down here at the bottom, let me see if I can get it out. Yes. <sighs> Sorry, guys success down at the bottom there these boards with foot pegs pop out for additional storage all right and to show you a really cool feature additional on the back here so I'm knocking down my set has two additional four additional um, exhaust well, those aren't exhausts, those are water jets. But you pull this handle out and it deploys the hydrofoils. And what this does, what the hydrofoils do, they work like a, a wing underwater. And the faster the craft goes, this the craft lifts up out of the water and skids along on these wings and those wings help it from flipping over if you ever watched a jet boat race they get going too fast where the front end the boat lifts up and they catch wind and eventually flip over so the hydrofoil prevents that from happening very cool it is a real world thing back in the 80s hydrofoils were really popular amongst the more affluent but down inside the cockpit, I'm embarrassed by the dust. But you can see it's a com control console and a Cobra sigil up here at the front. A really cool play feature on this is the depth charges. That was a feature that we played with a lot as kids. Really cool. It's often overlooked. Like you should overlook all the dust. This is terrible. Did my hardest to get it all cleaned up. All right. So there we have it. Uh, this 
very nice hydrofoil pride of my collection uh, I had this as a kid uh, got it for Christmas in 1988 but um, while moving I had a box that mysteriously ended up missing don't know if it got left behind but I did not find it when I went to clear out the uh, finish cleaning the house um, or if it fell out of the back of somebody's truck or somebody just took it um, I had my night raven in there and a hydrofoil both ended up missing and I had to replace both of them at quite a cost but I did get a very good deal on this um, at a used bookstore uh, had traded for it um, plus a few additional dollars like thirty dollars more on top of a, a trade so it worked out pretty well for me oh sorry got something going on in the camera there we go so yeah it, it worked out really well for me um, in the end a very good example of the hydrofoil and uh, I was quite lucky to to find it I just walked into the store and uh, asked him if they had anything GI Joe and the guy behind the counter said yeah wait one second he pulled that out and I said, deal let me go get you some stuff out of the car and uh, made the trade right there so anyway uh, yeah, the, the hydrofoil has been a part of my life since 85, as it is, I'm sure, with a lot of you guys. It it shows the best of 85 in G.I. Joe, amongst the best. Uh, the flag is one I will never have, uh, just simply because of the cost and the space. And the flag is one of those that's unfortunately going to keep on going up in price is the scarcity of it and collectors are just snatching them up and I doubt they will ever get rid of them so eventually we won't have any more flags out there but or for sale I should say now, if you haven't checked out GI Joe Berg check out their channel they actually made a USS flag float I kid you not if you have not checked it out go to their channel they took it out into the ocean. They live in South Africa. They made that bad boy float. Uh, first time in G.I. Joe history. So <laughs> I, my jaw just hit the ground when I saw that. So time for my favorite segment. Byron's gripes and my visor is falling <laughs> That's better. Uh, Yes, Byron's gripes. There are hydrofoils out there for sale. Complete ones, I didn't find any this time around. For those of you just joining me, I only uh, take prices off of eBay just for the simple convenience of it, not to pick on eBay or the sellers. That's not what this channel is all about. Uh, it's just a matter of convenience and I don't quote auction prices because those are fluid but I do quote you the fixed prices and I do this so you guys can get an idea of what things are selling for what's a good price what's a bad price but that's for you to determine you know it's all on your fixed budget so GI Joe hydrofoil the driver, complete, with file card, $18.99 to $29.99. Okay, those, those, those are pretty decent prices. Uh, just look for the gun and make sure the strap is not cut off. Uh, but very good prices on, on those two. The yellow missiles that mount up on the side, $9.95 for one of those. Really? Nine ninety five just for one. Uh, no, 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 no. That's that's being greedy, fella. So if you don't want my legion of alley vipers coming knocking on your door, 
lower your prices. File card, uncut, 1999. For uncut file cards that are exclusive with vehicles, that's about the average price. Or uh, through Hasbro Direct, those are average prices. The turret with the gun, $11.40, not bad. The turret without the gun, $8.99, little, little too too expensive. I'm sorry, this belt club is starting to make my head itch. Uh, the torpedoes, five bucks each. Not bad for those guys. So if you want to keep those from falling off, you could either use, like I, I used um, Sealer, which you, know, you can find in the arts and crafts store. Uh, make sure it's all purpose, because some of them are a little caustic and can damage the plastic. Fingernail polish works really well. Um, just anything to create a, a barrier between the torpedo and its slot will keep it from falling off. Uh, the moray, um, named after the vicious moray eel, uh, incomplete with the file card. Uh, it means he doesn't have his gun. Eleven ninety nine to fourteen ninety nine, not too bad. Uh, not great. Um, Fifteen bucks is a little high for it not having its gun. The engine cover four ninety nine. Uh, all the missiles that mount underneath the, the top hatch there, uh, all four of them are $6.76. Depth charges are 5 bucks each. That's a little expensive on those. There are a lot of them out there. Uh, let me see. The... Uh, can't read my own writing. The hydrofoil itself, that's incomplete. $70 to $149.99. Excuse me, had a hiccup there. Uh, $149.99. Uh, it was missing the, the windshields, which are notoriously missing, and I think the lens cover. So uh, $149.99 is not bad. It's, it's a pretty decent price. The one for 70 bucks was dismantled and incomplete, so I think that was just more for parts than anything. Um, this, the side gun, the big gun on there, 12 bucks, and the center gun by itself that mounts onto the turret, 199 or $1.99 for that. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Um, a fantastic vehicle again I want to apologize for this thing is just terribly dusty um, I'm gonna to need to get an air can and spray it to get all the the fine the dust out of the finer areas um, had this mounted up on a shelf all these years so it accumulated a lot of dust even though I do go through and dust my collection quite often um, like I said, I live in the desert, so dust accumulates on stuff. So this is just a really cool toy. Uh, there's a bottom view of it. Um, falls apart pretty easy. There's a lot of loose pieces on it. But I do highly recommend that you guys get one of these. Uh, search the market for it. And uh, find it at a good price. Don't forget to negotiate, even if it doesn't say or better offer. I've had some luck with negotiating prices. Express your interest. Say, uh, let's say it's been on the market for a little bit. Use that as, as leverage. Say, you know, I've, I've been watching this for a while and you've had it on the market for X amount of weeks. Um, you know, could, could we work on the price a little bit? Um, I got my. Um, Lobotomax. Yeah, Card of Lobotomax doing that. The guy had it out there for I think close to four months and um, I talked him down from a hundred dollars down to a much lower price. So 
uh, he was just happy to get rid of it. Um, a lot of collectors don't like him for some reason. I, I love him, he's just weird. But he doesn't fit the military side of G.I. Joe, that's why a lot of collectors don't. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Ooh, speaking of dust. <coughs> Goodness. But, uh, yeah. Uh, it, the Star Brigades steered away from G.I. Joe or the military side. So, uh, I'm going to do a quick tour of my collection room uh, while we're at this. Uh, just uh, part of the celebration. Um, let you guys see what's going on with my collection. So right down here is a diorama that I have done. Uh, took some clay and uh, made sandbags. I followed G.I. Annis's instructional video on that. So I haven't glued those together yet, but um, nice little diorama, uh, a custom Night Force Duke that I made. So heading up, all my Tiger Force I have them bagged. There's a modern flint. Up here is the G.I. Joe Command Center complete. That was a long time doing to get that one completed. Pretty cool. Uh, the submarine's incomplete. 85 carded figures. Now, some modern action figures here. Car uh, Asp. My Eel Platoon. There's Doc. Lifeline. Ninja Force Zartan. A couple comic pack snake eyes. Just some more odds and ends. Almost all the Slaughter's Marauders. Custom Tiger Force Ram. So let's go around to the ceiling here. Great way to display stuff. and save shelf space. Just some off-brand helicopters. Locust. Oh, some more vehicles bagged up. Mud Fighter. I'll review that pretty soon. Oh, it's my little girl when she was a baby. All of my, most of my black majors. Right up there is a tactical battle platform, which we'll be reviewing this month. Tiger Force. And of course, all the 86 figures. Right there. Conquest. Two of them. One's incomplete. Uh, yeah, that one right there is stun. Yeah, it's missing the canards on it. Fang 2. A bunch of Cobra file cards up there. boxes. So right here are some more modern figures, some comic book packs. Modern Eel, pretty cool. Storm Shadow, comic book packs. Hold on, there's something going on. I gotta check it out. There's a weird rumbling coming from outside. I don't know what that was all about. Oh, my only Shadow Ninja. And then Checkpoint Alpha, which is complete. More Tiger Force. And what happened? 
to my diorama. Jeez. My nephew is over here visiting. I don't know if he took it or what. Uh, I was wondering why the living room got so quiet. I'll go out and check on him. You know, he's eight years old, so he might might have taken out there to play. But uh, yeah, there you have it. That's my collection. Uh, huh. Let me catch my breath. So let's wrap up this segment. Uh, once again, I am thrilled to be a part of Cobra Convergence this year. Thanks again, Brian, for Byron, Steve, whatever name you go by <laughs> these days, Hootie Coco. Thank you for that. Uh, coming up next is Analog Toys. I'll uh, have his info down in the uh, um, description. So. He'll be popping up tomorrow. And if you want a full schedule of reviewers, this is the biggest Cobra Convergence that's going on uh, thus far. Uh, head over to HCC, or hoodedcobracommander.com and I'll have that in the description as well. He has a whole schedule posted for you guys to check it out and please watch these channels. Uh, these guys are hard workers, uh, do a lot better job than I do. And uh, I mean, they're, they're great. I follow them and uh, they, they put out some good products. Uh, good videos, I should say. So I'm going to get out of this nasty hot costume. Uh, I'll do that off camera. Spare you guys the, the misery. Uh, so, this has been Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. You guys have a fabulous day. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to everybody, especially be kind to animals. See you next week for another review. Uh, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, also, want to become a channel supporter? Let me wrap it up with that. Uh, Go ahead and check out my coffee account. Leave me a tip. You can become a channel supporter that way. And if you want to mail something to me to help the channel out, I will not say no. Um, it's not absolutely necessary for you to do it. Don't feel obligated. Uh, it just helps the channel out. You'll be listed as a channel supporter that way as well. Um, I will be holding a giveaway when I reach 500 subscribers. So. I'm rapidly approaching that, hopefully, and um, when I reach that 500, be holding a giveaway, and also a giveaway for uh, the channel supporters exclusively. It won't be a better prize for them. Um, I won't do that. Everybody gets equal share, but um, the channel supporters will have their own individual drawing, just my way of thanking them. And uh, that's it, guys. Uh, again, be kind to everybody, especially be kind to animals. We'll talk to you later. See you next week. Stay tuned for that. Hit the bell for a notification when my video comes up. We'll talk to you later. I'm getting out of this suit.